Hello, everybody, and welcome to this edition of Sports Central. Hey, we've got a great show for you. National Water Ski Champion Donna Switzer from Ski Paradise is joining us. Bill Kelly, Sunshine State Games Archer and Florida Sports Foundation 2012 Male Athlete of the Year and Wayne Rath, General Manager of the Lone Palms Golf Course. We have a great show, so stick around everybody for this edition of Sports Central. everyone and welcome to our first segment of Sports Central today. Hank Longo along with Neil Duncan and what a treat to get to work together on this show. I'm so happy to be here with you again Hank. I, I can I see can that. barely control myself. <laughs> <laughs> no just kidding this is going to be a great show and this uh, segment is brought to us by the Florida Department of Citrus you know and a uh, great partner of ours and a partner at the Lake Myrtle Sports Park and really getting out there and uh, doing some sampling and making sure that these young kids know you know how to take on the day. In fact that's their campaign. How to but, take on uh, the day. Take on the day, start with a good breakfast, start with that Florida citrus, and uh, we're very blessed to have that industry here in uh, Florida as well as Polk County. So, well, we want to thank them so much for sponsoring this yep. first segment, and what a fun segment it is. One of my favorite people on the planet getting to join us today, national water ski champion Donna Switzer from Ski Paradise in Mulberry. And Donna, what a treat it is to have you on the show today. Well, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here again. It's um, it's always an honor to be with. Hank, of course, and now with a new person, so I'm enjoying it very much. <laughs> well, for you folks uh, that might not be aware of Ski Paradise, it's a beautiful ski lake, actually two ski lakes in Mulberry that are, are part of the, the mining that they, that they do down in uh, the Mulberry area, and it's a beautiful ski site. In fact, it's one of the best ski sites in the world. And we're fortunate enough to have the state championships there, the regional championships. And, and Donna, starting tomorrow, uh, we've got our Father's Day tournament that uh, happened. And we just had the 65th Lakeland Open at Ski Paradise. That's right. We had a tournament a week or so ago. And tomorrow we have a tournament. It's uh, one day only, starting about 8 o'clock, going through probably until 6 o'clock. We have a lot of juniors this year um, at our tournament, and probably three or four new young people that have never skied a tournament before so we're really excited about that that we're finally bringing in some young people into the sport rather than us old people that just, just keep just hanging, keep hanging around <laughs> and <laughs> plugging away at it um, but you know this is a great tournament the father's day tournament as well as the lakeland open because they're not record capability tournaments which uh, which means you, you ski you still get a score but it doesn't take as all the technical uh, set up that you need and all the officials that you would need for a record capability tournament which is why we're getting to introduce the sport to these young people which is a great opportunity for them to to get into a tournament and, and experience that yes you know it's, so many tournaments in the state are, are very expensive anymore as with everything i guess and with this level of a tournament we can reduce the fees so it does enable families we have one family with four kids skiing they couldn't afford a record capability tournament. So it's, it, it affords them to be able to come to the tournament. Uh, a more relaxing event, I guess, is, is what I'm hearing about this event. And tell us how this different is different to where new skiers can be involved. With some skiers, if you're not at a professional level, you're mm -hmm. sort of intimidated going to a tournament where the, the good guys right. are. And so this tournament, it's a fun tournament for the kids to play and to, to be able to ski and to relax. And the parents all enjoy the site. So it, it's a great family day tomorrow. Well, I think what's so neat about the sport of water skiing is regardless of the, the caliber of skier you are, everybody hangs out together and you'll get world champions and former world champions that are um, so easy to talk to and are always willing to offer advice and you know you've got these young skiers that are new to the sport and they can hang out with these type of uh, athletes and, and get good tips and, and get the pointers that uh, maybe can help them raise to the next level. Yes and, and you know too I mean like tomorrow we have the second generation so the Lucky Lowe's, the Ricky McCormick's are going to be there 
uh, with their kids. So that adds to, you know, they're still idols to some people, so it's nice for them to be there. They're still idols to me. They are to <laughs> me, too. <laughs> well, the event is tomorrow, uh, June 15th, and the, the slalom trick and jump, and it says, to see by each one of those, having no idea about the industry, what does that mean well, and uh, what will people see? It's two rounds, um, so each contestant gets to ski twice, oh, which okay. is what most people like. Then if they mess up the first time, at least you, it's like they a mulligan. They get a mulligan, yeah. to put it in golf so terms. <laughs> so, you know, you get to go back for seconds. Fantastic. So it's a, it's a good thing. We don't have a concession tomorrow. Our concessionaires are on vacation, but I think we charge like a buck a carload, so if anybody, you know, spectators want to come see. Yeah. Hank is our announcer. We're the, one of the very few sites in the state that have an announcer, so the spectators know what's going on. So it, it, he makes it a lot of so fun. So not only do they get to see some great skiing, they get a sideshow. Yes, they get the pretty side much. Show, yeah? <laughs> they get to listen to me telling stories all day long. And just some, some great stories. I mean, that's what's been so fun for me at commentating for all these years is that uh, the stories. And there's a story with every skier, there's a, a story with, with every ski club, and, and Donna's husband, Stan, is also a national champion, national trick champion, national slalom champion. And a few years ago, he had a very serious ski accident. And Donna, would he break his pelvis or? He separated his pelvis, so he was in pretty bad shape. And so here he has this horrific injury that knocked him out for a year, but then he comes back and wins the national yes. championships again. Wow. So I mean, there's such good stories to share with all the people there. And like another member at Ski Paris, Paradise, Lucille Borgen, who uh, is no longer with us, but skied until how old was she? She was 94 when she skied her last nationals. And wow. She had a little hard time remembering what to do, but she was phenomenal. And, and this is a story where I go back with Lucille in the Midwest when I was a kid just starting to ski tournaments. Uh, we go down to Ohio and there would be Lucille camping out at the tournaments and I mean I've had a a relationship with her since I was a young kid. So you get skiing with these people your whole life. It's and, a community. And it's yeah. one it's yeah. one great story after another. So when we get talking about the tournaments, you know, you uh, you can tell these stories about these people. You know, Frankie D's another legend in the sport. In fact, I think this guy's got to go down as one of the best jumpers that's that's ever lived. Uh, and um, you know, to ski with him, and he trained at Ski Paradise until he just got so beat up from it that he's finally retired, but uh, another great story there from your club. He's retired from competition, but he's skiing every other day, slaloming. It's in his blood. Yeah. And it's, will he ever give it up? Probably not. Now, the only thing that'll make him stop is an elephant gun. And that's that's right. It, you know, and it's just amazing. But there's a passion there, too, that yeah. is probably one of the most burning passions I've ever seen from an athlete to be a champion. Well, and, and to that point, uh, it's not just events. Uh, the facility, you can go out there and actually learn how to ski and things like that. Tell us about the facility itself and what you guys offer. Ski Paradise, we've been around for over 20 years. As Hank said, it was a um, diggings from the phosphate mines, mm -hmm. and they reclaimed the area around us, and we bought it from the mines over 20 years ago. Uh, we have a club where people join, mm -hmm. and we don't run a ski school or mm -hmm. anything, but people join as a club member, mm -hmm. and they bring their boat and they ski whenever they want. Um, we have like a winter membership. A lot of people up north come down for the winter, and so we have a winter membership for them. But um, it's basically a private ski club. We're calling it a retirement home for skiers <laughs> right now because <laughs> almost half of the club members, I think, are retired. So. Well, and you have you have two uh, two lakes, uh, one jump. It's a gated Community. gated faci yes. facility. Mm -hmm. uh, the memberships you talked about. Uh, you've got electrical hookups, so people can actually come in and, and do all this. So you've got the infrastructure there that you really could turn into uh, <laughs> turn into <laughs> yeah. a can ski I say, uh, retiree uh, yeah. ski park. <laughs> Well, for those folks that are not real familiar with how water skiing has evolved, because here in, in Polk County, it's the water ski capital of the world, and as the whole sport started, people were, you know, out on public lakes and belonged to ski clubs, right. and 
and that's how you would get going and that went for years and years until you started to run into situations where you'd be having a tournament on a public lake and other boats would be going up and down the right. lake making rollers and waves going into the course which made it you know tough to ski in and an advantage for some skiers a disadvantage for others so it's evolved to these private lakes that are controlled and and are really just big enough to to have a slalom course and a jump course right. to control the wind conditions and I said you know skiing at ski paradise it's like going to one of the best golf country clubs in the world to, to go play golf and that's what it's like to, to ski out at ski paradise well, it's just uh, one of the best uh, tournament sites in the in the country and in the world what Wait. else should we know about ski paradise before we let you go well it is a fun place for to host a, a tournament mm -hmm. I think that the, the nicest thing is people enjoy coming and, and a lot of sites you might not say that, so I think that's important. And um, we're always, uh, we're two miles east of Mulberry on Highway 60. And um, again, we have our webpage, um, skiparadiseflorida.com, that if anybody wants any information, they can look at that. Well, we certainly know, and of course, uh, uh, Hank has a passion being in the sport of himself for a very long time, but those of us who aren't in the sport see the economic impact of Polk County and uh, the overnight stays these tournaments bring in, and we thank you for all that you've thank done. Thank you. All right. Yeah, we had a great regional championships there a couple years yes, ago, and we maybe did. we can get you guys to get another one down <laughs> That's here. right. Whatever we have to do, we deal will be in that pickup boat, dragging skiers out, and putting in boys. We'll get them real used to I don't to know about all that. Why does keep us? We got you there. Well, Donna, thank you so much for joining thank us, you. and I look forward to tomorrow, and hopefully we're going to get a yes. nice big, long jump out of that I day. I hope so, that you ride away. Yes, that I ride you're, away. You're good at big, long jumps. <laughs> Let's just ride them it's away. just riding them away where I can end up crying as I see you know title just go on down the lake but thank you very much you're welcome thank you and uh, we are gonna go take a look at a spotlight on a mountain biker Coney Burnett you're gonna enjoy this a little something different but we'll be back right after this segment I started riding when I was five years old and I started riding because my dad saw a bunch of people out here when I played t-ball and he saw a bunch of people on bikes and he bought himself a bike and my, myself a bike and we started riding. The person who inspires me the most to keep going and train and do good in races is my dad. He's my coach and he helps me out in everything I do in mountain biking. My favorite athlete is Drew Edsall because he, he comes down to Florida and rides with our group called Cycle Youth. He teaches us pretty much everything he knows. I think my biggest accomplishment would be the six hours of El Agarto at Carter Road Park. It was a six hour race and I won the beginner men class. My favorite subject in school is world history. I'm really good at that. I like it a lot. And after high school, I want to ride for a college team. And hopefully I can be successful in that and then go on to be a professional mountain biker. In the sport of mountain biking, there's state races, there's national races, there's World Cup races, and there's Olympic races. And the main, main goal for most mountain bikers is to go to the Olympics. That's the biggest race. My race season runs from September to December, and I usually train for really hard for about four months before the race season. And I'll train about four or five times a week really hard doing intervals and just doing long rides to keep your endurance up. And during race season you'll do some hard rides in between races but not too much. You want to stay recovered for them. When I'm not mountain biking I like to go fishing a lot. That's my favorite hobby besides mountain biking. If I had described myself in one word, it would probably be dedicated, because all I do is ride my bike, and I train really hard for all the races I do. Before races to get pumped up, I usually watch videos about mountain biking to get me pumped up and watch all the, all the pro guys race their hearts out. Probably one of the best crashes I've ever seen was at a state race in Alachua, Florida. A kid was, we, were ju we had just started on the line, and he was pedaling as hard as he could, and his foot came out of his pedal. And uh, 
he flipped over his bike and caused three other people to crash. And there was people had chain ring marks in their legs and they were bloody. It was pretty bad. The hardest part about mountain biking is climbing and the last lap of the race. Those are always the toughest things that wear you out the most. Hello everyone and welcome back to our second segment of Sports Central. Hank Long along with Neil Duncan and some great mountain bike footage there. Yeah, absolutely. And Cody was ranked number one in the U.S. in cycling and mountain uh, cross country. So uh, great uh, athlete here in Polk County and some great uh, trails around Polk County with uh, the natural environment that we have. Uh, so some, some neat footage there. And as, of course, we always want to thank PGTV for some great camera work. This segment brought to us by Legoland Florida, another one of those great partners just like PGTV. It sure is. And we have another champion athlete joining us for this second segment. Bill Kelly, the Sunshine State Games Archer in 2012, Male Athlete of the Year. And welcome, Bill. Great to have you here. This is going to be fun talking about this stuff. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me. Mr. First Trent. question. Okay. How hard do I have to throw this to hit Hank with that? <laughs> not too hard. Not too hard at all. They're pretty accurate. They're good arrows. Now, this is... Can I take a look at this? Is I like a little different props. than what... Uh, um, Tonto used back oh, in the geez. day, but uh, wow. this is designed to look at the, you know, there's yeah. not feathers anymore, those are simulated feathers, and it looks like it's made out of graphite, and, and talk a little bit about the arrow that yes, you're sir. using. Uh, these are actually uh, X-10 arrows, they're specialized for a 70 meter Olympic competition, so you, you talk about feathers, we still actually use feathers on some of our arrows for when we shoot like indoor competitions. Uh, they're affected too much by the weather. So for outdoors where we have to shoot a long way and we want to be real accurate, we use an arrow like this. So it's not affected by the wind and the conditions as much. Some high tech stuff. Right Sorry, there. we, we, <laughs> we got <laughs> sidetracked with this. <laughs> it's neat when we get props here, but uh, it, it will, it will talk about the many accolades and, and awards that you've won, but how has the, in, the competition changed uh, with the technology? Because you started when? How, how long ago did you start? I started shooting uh, 22 years ago when I was nine. Okay, how, how, how has it changed since then? It, it's changed a little bit. Uh, the arrows haven't changed too much. These arrows were actually introduced in 96, so this really? exact setup was, was available then. The bows have changed a little bit. Um, we've gone away from wood limbs, mm -hmm. and we use a lot more foam carbon technology. Um, the risers are moving more towards the technology. So the, the bows are getting lighter, uh, faster, much more durable, and more accurate, more forgiving. So, but it, arrows haven't changed too much. Well, one of the things uh, I'm fascinated by this, and uh, if if you're you know competing, you know it's how you hit the bullseye, I'm sure. But there's got to be a few real basic techniques that you have to focus on to be good. Yes, sir. The recurve archery is a, a very technique-oriented sport. Um, it's all about positions and repeating yourself. If you can do a lot of different stuff, but as long as you can repeat it, you're fine. So, but there's, there's some basic parts that are, are required to shoot well. You have to have, use your bone structure very well. We, we shoot a lot of poundage on our bows. Our bows have a like 44, 45, 50 pound resistance. So you can't hold that back consistently with a lot of muscles. So you, you use a lot of bone structure and different things to, to manage that weight. So. Well, you, you've obviously done that very well. You uh, were the Sunshine State Games Archer uh, 2012 Athlete of the Year. Um, let's talk about these scores and then, you know, for somebody who's not familiar with okay. archery, talk about, you know, how, how well you actually did here. I okay. uh, set highest scores in 2012, uh, adult male compound release score of 1389. And how many were possible? Uh, our perfect score for the round is 1440. So, so it, it's did a good fairly score. good. It's a yeah. good score. You're yeah. happy with that score? Yeah, I, I'm pretty happy with it. That's that was actually a personal best at the time, and I, I haven't beat it. So, but I actually shot that with a, a compound. I didn't shoot that with my recurve. So the score is a little easier. Um, I shot a recurve this year, and I shot a, a little bit lower score, but I'm still. Well, happy what is with the it. difference? Uh, a compound, um, as you pull the bow back after a certain point, we have a let off. So the the bow will get lighter in weight, pulling weight. So um, my compound is a 60-pound compound, but it has 60% let off. So at full draw, I'm only holding 24 pounds. With your recurve, the further you pull it, the heavier it gets. Okay. So I'm shooting a 44-pound recurve, but I'm holding 44 pounds at full draw. And uh, there's some little differences with our compound. With the, we have a sight that has actually a magnifying glass in it with a little dot, so you can aim much, much more fine 
with that than you can with a recurve. Well, let's talk about, because there's a lot of hunters here in Polk County in Central yes, Florida. Um, the bows can be the same for competition as they are in hunting, but uh, there's a difference in the weight, correct? Of You have to have so many pounds of pressure in hunting to make sure there's a clean kill in that, right? Yes, sir. It's not so much the poundage of the bow, it's the kinetic energy of the bow. Okay. So uh, I believe it's 35 pounds of kinetic energy, and most kids' bows can produce that anymore. Hmm. So, but there's actually classes and competitions where you can use a hunting setup outside of like the actual hunting tips. You can use the same exact setup though from competitions to hunting with very little problems. Okay, and then you got a 889 in the adult male freestyle event. How many were possible in that? Uh, perfect for that round was 900. So that was a, that was a good. Yeah, good. Is this all on the same day? Uh, those were back to back days. Back to back. A Saturday and a Sunday. Have you recreated exactly what you ate? Where you, how many <laughs> no. hours of sleep and, and all that? No, no. I, I haven't. I, I should look at doing <laughs> that though because it was a very good weekend. Very good weekend. Um, let's show us your bow. Let's okay. get a little idea of. of what this bow looks like, and uh, am I good here? Yeah, just see, or you can probably yeah stand out <laughs> here a little bit in front of us. I think Russell can yeah. can get you there without a problem. There this we is go. My, Maybe uh, come back here. Just, okay, there we, there, go. there we go. And um, this is the riser. This what holds the limbs and everything in place. It's the main part of the bow. Uh, this is the limbs. This is the part of the actual bow that actually flexes and gives the bow its power. This is our sights. Um, it has a little, what we call an aperture, on the front of the sights that we use to aim with. It moves up and down on the scale for different distances. And uh, these would be our stabilizers. These are, are part of the bow that um, we use to get the bow to aim a certain way and to hold steady. Uh, it gives the bow a little bit more stability, so it holds better in the, the wind. And uh, if we make a bad shot, it helps minimize the effect on the arrow. And so here, let, here, Bill, why don't you kind of grab an arrow here and, and show us uh, how that goes into the bow. It'll set up just like just this. Shoot it straight at that camera right there. <laughs> <laughs> no, just kidding. So here, I've got an idea, Bill. We don't have an apple, but if you can, <laughs> how about I hold that right up there and see if you can uh, spear that, uh, that softball how off the How about we not? You know what? I'm actually confident in that because you see these scores he got? He <laughs> so... But this is the, the big basic parts of the bow. So, and um, this, this recurve is fairly similar to a compound. The only difference is the compounds have little wheels. The limbs aren't nearly as long. They have a little uh, cam on each end of the bow. And uh, there's some little bit different distance, uh, differences in, on the string. That, that makes it a little easier to aim better. Now, what does a bow like that cost? Uh, a bow like this, set up just like this, uh, would be about about $2,500. Oh my gosh. And how much are the arrows? Uh, a dozen of those exact arrows um, run about $1,100. Or excuse me, uh, two dozen run about $1,100. Oh my gosh. So. so it's a little spendy to get into this sport. Bill. Yes, wow. sir. It sure is. Fascinating. And how many people will you compete against in an event? Uh, it depends on the tournament we go to. Um, last, uh, excuse me, two years in Louisville when I shot the national indoor competition, I competed against about 500 guys. So it kind of it depends on what shoot we're going to and which division you shoot. Now that event in Louisville is huge. Yes, sir. That's that, at the state fairgrounds, if I. Uh, the, the Louisville Indoor Competition is held at the, Na the Louisville Convention Center in okay. Louisville, Kentucky. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a, a very big competition, and they actually had a, a NASP tournament there uh, last year, and that drew 8,000 kids for that event. Wow. Oh, so, my God. It's, so, a, it's, it's a, a very good Now, are the kids' equipment less expensive than <laughs> yours? I mean, you're a national champ, so you're going to have the best they're that gonna you have can the best. get, and they're going to have the best. Yeah. Wow. Um, a lot of, the, it depends on the association. NASP has Real, restrict, real strict uh, equipment requirements. Um, the tournaments that I typically shoot, the kids will have the same exact setup I will, if not better. Not better. Oh my gosh. Well, you recently participated in the Gator Cup. Tell us what that, that's the 2014, you're part of the 2014 archery team? I uh, know. Or to I, get on the team? That, that's one of the events they use to select oh, okay. the USAT team. Um, I shot that uh, last weekend, and I, I finished tied for ninth. So great. it was a it was a great tournament. I uh, I did it better than I was expected, and I was hoping to finish a little bit better, but I was eliminated by uh, one of the Olympians from last year's Olympic team. So it was a it was a great shoot. I enjoyed it a lot. Now, um, 
do you compete in age groups or is like the open division I would think you would be competing in if there is an open division and if you're going to compete against Olympians? How does that work? There, there is an age breakdown. Um, there's about 12 different uh, age divisions depending on the association you're shooting with, but they also break it further down by equipment. So uh, at the National Indoor, there's, there's probably about 40, 45 different classes that you can compete in. So they try to make it fair for everybody and kind of spread the, the playing field out so you don't have professionals shooting against younger people or people that don't have similar equipment. Wow. Of course, you're right here from Polk County. Yes, sir. And uh, work with Publix, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, sir. I, I work for Publix Supermarkets. Uh, it's a great company. I've been working for Publix uh, for 12 years now. So I work in one of the several accounting departments. So. That's Fantastic. fascinating. Yep. And how did you get started in this? Who inspired you to become an archer? Uh, it, was, it was an odd story. I, we were just actually driving by an archery shop uh, in Lakeland at the time with my dad, and he asked if I'd like to go in there. And I, I said, of course. So uh, we went in there, and he bought me a bow, and I shot that bow for a few years. I basically wore it out, and I just continued to move on and until one day a, a father of a, a kid that was in a, a Joad group. It's a, it's a youth group that um, competed. Um, he asked me if I'd wanted to join, and I, I had never heard of Joad before. So I jumped at the chance, and um, I've been doing it ever since. What would your advice be to someone, you know, I've got a 10-year-old son, yes, and he, he wants to be, he wants to get involved in something like okay. this. Obviously, we're not going straight to that bow. No, sir. For multiple reasons. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> He's not going to try for 3,500 bucks and he doesn't like it. <laughs> but what would your advice be to, to someone younger or that wants to get in the sport and, and to learn about it and, and, you know, where could they try it out? What could they do to see if it's even something they want to be a part of? It, it's not too hard. There's a lot of archery shops in the area. There's there's one in here in Lakeland. The one I go to in Tampa, Arrowhead Archery, is a great shop. It's It's been there for 25 years. And you just can kind of go in and ask questions. Everybody you'll run into will be more than kind to help you. I've run into many, many wonderful, great people in archery. And everybody's willing to help and give advice and steer you in the right direction. So if anybody wants to get into archery, the easiest thing is to find a good local pro shop and just go in and, and try it. And they'll have bows there you can try and shoot. So they have ranges yes. at the at the shops, and there's there's clubs in Polk County you can get and be a part of. Yes, sir. Uh, there's a indoor range at most most shops. It'll be a 20 yard indoor range, mm -hmm. and uh, there's several clubs in Lakeland. Uh, excuse me, in Polk County, there's one in Lakeland called Ridge Archers. Mm -hmm. There's another club in Wachula called Central Florida Bow Hunters, and uh, most of the shops have clubs that run out of them also. Oh, that's fantastic. So you're basically, um, you're going to a, a, a shop or a club to be able to shoot. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, and that's, that's primarily when I practice. Is I like to go into the indoor shop and indoor range and shoot at the shop because it's air conditioned and it's nice and quiet and comfortable. I don't have to deal with the heat. And how long will you <laughs> practice for a day? Uh, it depends on the day. Most days I, I shoot for a couple hours. It, I don't have a, a set schedule or a set amount of time. I, I just shoot until I get tired or run out of time. So. Is there any uh, other, is this a sport where there's other training uh, versus practicing? I mean, do you run, is, or do you lift weight? Is it part of it? Uh, you don't have to. I, I believe it helps me immensely yeah. to condition, to, just to handle the conditions in the heat. Florida's a, a hot place, and if you're not in decent shape, the, the heat can beat you down pretty quickly. Right. So if, if you exercise and lift weights and run or do any kind of cardio, I, I think it helps immensely. And do you see that at the Olympic level as well? Yes. Yeah, a lot of the guys who, who compete at that level, they, they have a consistent workout schedule, not only to help them shoot better, but this it's a, it's a kind of a pedestrian sport, but it, it can be hard on your body if you're doing something consistently over and over for eight hours a day. So exercising helps. Now these that. fellas that are the Olympians, is this all they do? Can they make a living out of being an archer, or do they have a job and then try to figure out how they get to train on top of that? Uh, some of the guys here in U the U.S., there's a few guys who are fortunate enough to do this for a living. It's definitely not like uh, basketball or football where you can make a great living at it, but you can, between prize money and sponsorships from equipment manufacturers and contingency money, you can, you can make a decent living at it if you're one of the very top guys. And you were talking about the Gator Cup and the event uh, up there. You said that was one of the qualifiers or that was the qualifier? Uh, that's one of the four qualifiers. Uh, to qualify for the USAD team, you have to shoot four qualifiers and our national championships, which is in a couple weeks in Ohio. And uh, they, they kind of weighed everything based on your head-to-head -head matches and your individual arrow score to determine who makes the team. So 
Where, where, where do you <laughs> fall? Are, you, are we going to see you on that Olympic team? Uh, well, it, it's a little different for the Olympics. I, I definitely plan on working for the Olympics, uh, but I've only shot one of the four USAD events this year. Okay. So I, I'm not prepared yet uh, quite for that. But next year, I, I definitely expect to make a run at it. Well, when you get on the Olympic team and when you get that gold medal, the first place you're going is where? I'll be right back right here. Right here, right here. PGTV. On David Letterman, we need you right here. We need you right here. Well, <laughs> hey, Bill, thank you so much for joining us. Very fascinating, interesting, and Very. it's just unbelievable high, how high tech uh, this has gotten to be since the days of Robin Hood, that's for darn sure, but um, anyhow, what a treat to, to see this, and we hope to get you back on the show again. Well, we have some more great footage for you. You're going to enjoy this segment on the Tiger Trot 5K, coming right now. Roberts from Sports Central and we're at the 2013 Tiger Trot in Lakeland at Joker Marchant Stadium. Check out these great runners in action. We partner with uh, the Lakeland Flying Tigers and the Detroit Tigers um, and uh, they wanted some help putting on their um, Tiger Trot, which is an annual race that they had. Uh, this is the second year that we've been involved heavily in helping marketing and promote. We have Ron Myers from the Detroit Tigers. Tell us a little bit about the event. Well, this is about the 18th year that we've done this, and I think this is the best year we've ever had. Um, Tony from the Ledger and, and uh, Raging Running, these guys have just done an outstanding job of putting together this race, and uh, it couldn't have been a better day. How many participants did you have? We had just under 400, so that's one of our biggest uh, participants with racers that we've ever had. So we're very happy, and we're looking forward to next year. Well, Lakeland um, Ledger Media actually came to us and the Flying Tigers and asked us to help with them with the Tiger Trot. So to take this 5K and make it more of an event. And we actually got the course certified for them this year and we had chip timing. We've got three wonderful charities. Our Children's Academy down in Lake Wales, the uh, Ledger Newspaper and Education Program, and also the Detroit Tigers uh, Foundation of Florida. All the proceeds for this event go to them. kind of tough because I mean I never run in 5k like this I mean we do 400 meter runs 600 meter runs and that's about it but uh, not as 5k like this 3.2 miles it was kind of tough on my mind all in my mind was just power up and stay with it Today. I actually beat my record. My record was 10 minutes 25 seconds a mile and I did 9 minutes 42 seconds a mile. Children's Academy and Re Rehab down in Lake Wales. Uh, they uh, work with uh, uh, mentally challenged, uh, physically disabled uh, kids uh, anywhere from youth up through uh, middle school right now, and they're working on high school. And then our Ledger Media Group has a um, newspapers and education program where we try and keep the news inside the classrooms and let them be let them be aware of what's happening around the community.
we're going to start promoting this in September next year, um, which is about three months earlier than normal. We usually start in January, um, but we're, we got so many things. The course is now certified. Uh, we're trying to get it um, a sanction next year so that anybody who breaks an age group record, it can go national. So um, we're going to invite a bunch of runners out next year, and uh, hopefully we'll, we'll double the crowd next year. But thank you. Come on out. This is my first uh, 5K that I've ever done. Uh, it was pretty exciting. You know, definitely we'll do it again uh, next year. It was great. The weather was beautiful. Um, I liked the, the route that they had us on. It was great. Hello, everybody, and welcome to our third segment of Sports Central. Hank Long along with Neil Duncan and a tiger trot was good. Well, I, I think one of the neat things, and, and maybe something that people don't understand, is how much the Tigers, Ron, and Zach, and everybody, they put on other events. And they work with the city to put on other events there at the stadium. And then they work around, because you have spring training, and then you have the Lake of Flying Tigers, and they work around all of that to put on some great community events. Of course, the Florida uh, Ice Cream Festival was there, and then you look at an event like Tiger Tribe. But just want to thank them. We also want to thank Bright House Networks, uh, this segment sponsor, and uh, also a big supporter of the, uh, the event we're about to promote. Yes, and we want to welcome our next guest, Mr. Wayne Rath, who is the general manager of the Lone Palms Golf Course. Wayne, congratulations and welcome to the show. Oh, well, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Polk uh, County Amateur, uh, 37th Annual. Uh, yes, sir. Hasn't historically been at Lone Palm, but been there for a few years now and talk sure. about the transition and uh, the event. Okay. Um, well, it's been at least 20 years since uh, Lone Palm hosted the Polk County Amateur. Mm -hmm. This is going to be our first year, and we're going to host it for the next three years. Um, Bright House Networks and Dr. Adoka, who are mm -hmm. two of the key components of that golf tournament, right. uh, came and spoke to me and we decided to come to Lone Palm and we're very excited to have them. Now player or team entry deadline is July 26th, uh, sponsor donation deadline is June 21st, so we need to get the sponsors in first. The sponsors, <laughs> yes sir, that's what uh, the committee is working on, you know, I, um, I listen in on a lot of their committee meetings mm -hmm. and they're very dedicated to the charities that they um, support. I believe they support Girls Inc., mm -hmm. uh, the First Tee of Lakeland, um, as well as the Citrus Center Boys and Girls Club. Mm -hmm. And sponsors is what a big it's tournament about, like that's all yeah, about. Yeah. So um, I think right now what they're looking for is some more sponsors. They already have significant sponsorship already raised, um, but they're pretty close. And um, Bright House is a big component of that and a number of other community organizations have really stepped up. Well, when you talk about that, this event it's, uh, has donated $365,000 since 2005 to uh, charity. It's unbelievable. Uh, it is unbelievable. And it's one of the, they used to call it the big four in Polk County, yes, the, the, the amateur, yep. tournament, amateur tournaments. Uh, but this is definitely one of them. And talk about the event itself and the quality of the event. Not, not necessarily your course, because we know, yes. and we'll talk about that, we'll talk the about quality that. of this event. Yes, uh, what's made this event really great, and I've participated a number of times. Um, mm -hmm. I was fortunate enough to win it twice back in the day when I was still playing a lot. Um, it's very competitive. The best of all the players in Polk County get to play in this event. Um, so for, for one, it's very competitive. Two, it's very well run. Um, with the sponsorships that they've raised in the mm -hmm. past, Bright House has really stepped up to the plate. So the players get a nice tea gift. They get a great lunch um, after play. And just overall, it's run like a, like a real golf tournament. You know, it's not like a, I don't know, a second-rate event. Right. It's, it's done right. It's done right, first-class yeah. event. And, yeah. and you're getting these top, talented golfers. Are they're going to they're be in levels, I would believe. They are. They, they flight the different, um, the different levels of participants. And that's the one fallacy sometimes that people have. You know, I can't play in that. It's only the top. Ten right. players in the county that's got a chance of winning that. Right. Well, that's kind of a fallacy because what they do is they flight the whole event. So if we uh, get 120 participants, which I believe we'll get this year, I mean, being at Lone Palm and, and everything about the event, um, there are people that are 15 handicaps that play in that event or potentially even higher than that, but they go to a lower flight and they still have the same opportunity to win 
gift certificates and prizes and right. a phenomenal trophy for each flight winner. So Now, uh, let me ask this question. Say me, I'm in a yes. lower flight. Yes, sir. No, the and lowest flight. <laughs> whatever. Yeah. <laughs> but I have a phenomenal weekend and yes. I shoot the best score. Yes, sir. Would I st could I win the You'd tournament win. then, or you would I just win, win my yes, flight? Sir. You could still win. win. Okay. Uh, maybe down like the fifth or sixth flight, down towards the lower handicaps, um, there's sometimes a bit of a, a, a distance advantage that they give some of those lower flights. You okay. know, give them a higher fl uh, uh, a four T, okay. so they may not be able to win the overall championship. Okay. But there's probably seventy-five to eighty people flighted that could that walk could away with win. the main trophy. Yes, sir. Most you certainly. could have some someone come out of the woodwork and just shoot their game and exactly surprise right. everybody, which has exactly. to make it well, exciting. Just, uh, yes. for, Hank, this is not going to happen for you. I just want you to know. <laughs> I'm skiing You're in the regionals. Win. I'm skiing in the regionals. I, I'm missing it, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. My big opportunity, and I'm in yeah. the regionals. Yeah. But there's some, uh, to Hank's point, there's some yes. great competition here in Polk County and some great golfers uh, that uh, compete in these majors that uh, happen right here in Polk County. Oh. I mean, Central Florida is like a hub for international golf. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you look at Andy Bean and um, what Lee Jensen did, he played in the Pokemon Amateur back in the day. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of really great golfers have competed and, and won and played in this event. And you know, you mentioned Lee Jansen and the U.S. Open is going on right now. Isn't that, and yeah. you see what a huge tournament it is. And to think that our local kid won that thing a couple of times is, yeah. is it, phenomenal. It's, it's unbelievable. It is. And to get back to your point about anybody can win, the U.S. Open, you know, you can qualify for the U.S. Open if you have a great stretch of rounds. You know, anybody can try and qualify for the U.S. Open. And the same thing for the Pokemon Amateur. If you get in there, you could win the thing. You know, you just never know. <laughs> well, and, and yeah. let's, let, 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 full disclosure, you okay. were a national champion yourself. Yeah, I mean, I, I played for Florida Southern back in the day, mm -hmm. um, in, the, in the late 90s, and we had a lot of success. And um, one of the nice things was we did get an opportunity to play with Lee Jansen ever so often, mm -hmm. you know, and um, even past playing with Florida Southern. Every now and then he'd call some of the guys up and we'd go play golf with him and learn from him and get that experience and it's always been great. What kind of things does, you know, being at the caliber of golfer that you are, what kind of things does Lee share with you that, you know, got him to such a high level? Oh, I think, I think one of the things is just kind of just being cool and just playing around golf and just, just playing golf, just relax. You know, I think some of the younger guys, and I was certainly that way when I was younger, they sometimes get so intense trying to make it happen. Mm -hmm. And I think once you get to that high level sport like Lee did, those guys just kind of let it happen. You know, they work really hard and then once they get out there, they just let it happen. You have to have faith in your game and just yeah, play the game. And just, just play the game. It's just, a, it's just a game at the end of the day. Well, in the U.S. Open, there's certainly a tournament like that where sometimes you got to take your par, sometimes you got to take your bogey and just move on to the next hole. Yeah, and then just keep playing the game. Don't dwell on the past. Well, going back to uh, Lone Palm hosting this event, yes, sir. what's new at Lone Palm, uh, what are you guys doing out there, and how will uh, the Polk County Amateur being at Lone Palm change the event because of the course and its layout? It's been at a different course now, Lake Region, for a number mm -hmm. of years, probably seven or eight years, and um, every now and then, you know, people just need a little bit of a change, and um, I think that in and of itself, just the fact that there is a change is, right. is going to attract a number of people. Um, Lone Palm, in the last couple of years, um, Steve Smyers is a good member of Lone Palm, and um, he's helped me tremendously in, in reshaping some of the holes as far as the way we, we mow the rough versus the fairways. Uh, we've redesigned, completely rebuilt all of our bunkers, and our greens are in great shape. So I think that that's gonna, all, all three of those factors can be a nice um, addition for the, for the golfers. Um, you know, you say your greens are in, in great shape. It, yes. As you watch, the, I mean, these tournaments, and this is yes. what's going to make the difference in this amateur, yes. is the putting. And when you see, like at the U.S. Open, and this is true for any, of, any caliber of golf, though, yes. but when you watch these guys making pars, they're dropping 30, 40 foot putts to make par, to, par time, to, yeah. to, to read that. So to have these good greens at your course will really 
bring out the the guys that really can can putt well because I it, think that's what that's the difference right there is coming in close and then yeah. making those putts. Exactly right, and I think what people enjoy too when when you're competing at a higher level is if you hit a really good putt and it's online, it's got the right speed and it actually goes in, that's kind of a nice change from sometimes these guys play on a golf course or you know conditions are not exactly right and they hit a perfect putt and it just hops all over the place and it or doesn't go in. you think it's going to drop exactly because the way you right. look at it, it just keeps going straight. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then you know if conditions are, are favorable and weather permitting, you know, I think that the greens will be really nice and we'll have them as fast as we can, you know, for that time of the year. You know, the grass grows pretty heavily in August, mm -hmm. so the rough will probably be uh, Nice well. and healthy. Uh, <laughs> well, I was going to ask that. Are you, gonna, yes. are you going to manicure the course any differently than you would for your members? Um, no, actually not. I mean, we, we typically have a high expectation from our membership, mm -hmm. you know, so um, we have the greens as fast as conditions really allow or uh, the health of the turf allows. Um, but one thing we probably will do is we will roll and double cut the greens a little bit more so than we typically would do just on a normal weekend because it's a little bit more labor intensive. And it will make the greens a little firmer and faster than they typically would but be. But you're not going to go with a three and a half inch uh, uh, rough like they do at the no. U.S. Open. No, our, our rough is plenty of thick out there, honestly. <laughs> uh, Bermuda rough is very thick and mm -hmm. very hard to hit out of. And one and a half inches at Long Palm is going to be all that those guys are going to need. They're still going to be looking for it. And what we've done, like I said, Steve Smyers mm -hmm. um, uh, helped us uh, reshape some of the way we mowed the fairways and the rough cut. So some of, the, um, some of the fairways are a little bit narrower in spots than they were typically in the past. And especially from the back tees, um, it might be even a little bit more tricky in some spots. So the guys will have to navigate where they position their tee shots and not just take a driver and bomb it. And just, well, and what, will, what will the yardage be for this event? Um, we're, we're, looking at, we're looking at about 6,900 yards. Um, but one of the other changes I didn't mention was when we redid our bunkers and things, we also uh, lengthened some of the par three tees. Mm -hmm. So some of, all the par threes can play over 200 yards. Wow. Um, well, that's so, easy. So, uh, so we will tweak we will tweak those a little bit, wow. but um, we'll, we'll land at 6,900 yards when it's all said and done. Wow. You know, Wayne, as you, you said that this is the first time you've hosted this in, in, in a long time yes. and that it's been at Lake Region for a number of years. Well, if yes. you've played in this tournament for a number of years at Lake Region, yes, you've sir. kind of figured out Lake Region. I mean, you know the golf yes. course and you know how to play the golf course and, and that's exactly. to your advantage. Now you have everybody coming to a course that they haven't got to play a lot and they're going to have to learn as exactly. they play, which would even put, make it more exciting because there's not somebody that really has that great advantage of playing it a lot before they get there. Exactly. Um, and, you know, you have horses for courses. You know, it's just kind of the way it is. Tiger Woods plans his schedule around the courses that he enjoys. And uh, many times rookies on the PGA Tour, for instance, they struggle that first year or two because a lot of the other competitors have been playing on those same courses year after year after year. Mm -hmm. These guys seeing it maybe for the first time in their life. Yes. You know, so I think in, in this case, you, you're absolutely right. I think that um, uh, nobody's going to have a major advantage as far as having seen the course a lot. Well, how can people, uh, A, sign up to be a sponsor, a part of the event, or B, uh, players? How can they sign up to get yes, involved? Yes, sir. Um, what you can do is you can go straight to uh, Lone Palm's website, actually. We have a link on our website, uh, lonepalmgc.com. Uh, there's a link for the Polk County Amateur um, under our events uh, tab. And you could also find the event on Facebook. There's all kinds of information on there um, under Polk County Amateur. Just look up Polk County okay. Amateur and you'll find it there. All right. Well, fantastic. Well, it should be a, a, a fun event for you. It's Good uh, luck, Hank. I, I know you're going to do well. I says I can. <laughs> uh, I just happened to be out of town that weekend, and uh, yeah, I'm going okay. I'm, I'm to miss it. And, convenient, isn't it, yeah, Wayne, that he's going to be out of town? Yeah, that's Wayne, great. we thank you so much, and good luck uh, having this event back at Lone Palm. And uh, we know it's in good hands there at uh, Lone great. Palm. Well, thank you so much. All right, thank well, you. It's fun getting to chat golf with you. I, yeah. I just love talking golf. and. To carry on and carry on but you know we're gonna leave golf now and we're gonna have you check out the Iron Kids Triathlon a great event check out these young kids you'll be impressed and we'll be right back after this segment
Well, I'm the race director for the uh, Iron Kids Triathlon Series. Uh, we have over 30 events nationwide uh, that you know, focus on swimming, biking, and running. And uh, we are happy to be here in Haines City producing uh, the United Healthcare Iron Kids Florida Triathlon. This is our second year with the Iron Kids race, as well as the Ironman 70.3 race. Uh, we moved over here two years ago from uh, another location, and we're glad to be here. We have great support from Haines City and Polk County, and this is a great uh, venue to host an Iron Kids race at. We have over 350 kids here racing today here in uh, Haines City. Uh, they swim in the uh, Lake Eva Community Center pool and then they will bike throughout the streets of downtown Haines City, and then they will uh, complete their run uh, throughout the park here at Lake Eva, and uh, then they will cross the finish line uh, in, uh, in the middle of the park, uh, in, in the middle of the uh, Iron Man and Iron Kids Expo. There's approximately 1,500 athletes registered for the Ironman and there were 350 registered athletes for Iron Kids. For registration we were checking kids in, making sure they knew what to do, making sure their parents knew what to do, just giving direction as to where to go on the course, where um, transition is, and just giving them general information. The best part of being a race director is seeing all these young kids out here really embracing the sport of triathlon. You know, some kids choose soccer, some kids choose baseball. These kids have chosen triathlon as their sport. They're, uh, they're participating in three sports all at once, so it's really cool to see the growth of triathlon and the growth of youth triathlon. So that's the most rewarding part about being an Iron Kids race director. The venue here is absolutely beautiful. Uh, the finish line has a great location. We're using the pool here for the kids. Uh, it's a great pool, uh, perfect for our young athletes, and we're just happy to be here at uh, Lake Eva Park in downtown Haines City. Working with uh, Haines City and working with Polk County has been extremely rewarding, and we're looking forward to future years out here. Hi everyone and welcome back. Our fourth segment is sort of central. Hank Long along with Neil Duncan over here to my right and uh, what a fun show. We had Donna, one of my favorite people mm -hmm. on the planet. Boy, I'll tell you, Bill and that bow and arrow setup he had was unbelievable. Well, it just shows you that, you know, it's not all baseball, it's not all yeah. softball or soccer. There's many different aspects or different sports that people are competing in and, and we have great talent right here in Polk County and uh, and then again you talk about the Polk County Amateur and, and the talent that, that we have we are truly blessed and uh, actually talk about the Polk County All Sports Awards will be June 25th at the Lakeland Center and that's always a great show it is and it's just it's so easy to do is. because you have so many athletes to to honor for what they've done. So uh, a great a great uh, amount of talent here. This segment brought to us by Hollywood Window Tinning and Signs. If I did I say that? Yeah. Did and I? We want to thank them a lot because uh, Chris and does so much for us and we really Chris and Rachel. It. Yep. Chris and Rachel do so much. We appreciate their support. A lot of events coming up. We're going to kind of share with you quickly some of the neat things going on here in uh, Polk County as we get moving along in it. And Neil, you're uh, up to date on all of these. Of course, we hit the All Sports Awards coming up June 25th, but Polk State College uh, basketball camp, we've got that going yep. on. You've got that at, uh, uh, with Matt, Coach Matt Perjanic. Uh, that's going to be the 24th through the 27th. That's at the Winter Haven campus. Of course, you can call 863-292-3695 if you want more information about that. Uh, and we talked about the All Sports Awards, and of course, that'll be at the Lakeland Center June 25th, uh, 6.15 p.m. Uh, can you tell us anything about the Hall of Fame inductees, or we got to wait for the? Uh, I think, well, no, because then why would anybody buy a ticket? They'd already. Uh, uh, yeah, it's always nice. Well, I will say this. I will say uh, uh, 
uh, Major League Baseball Hall of Famer Al Kaline will be inducted that night. Uh, Tiger great, uh, and uh, the Tigers have been in Lakeland for 77 years and uh, uh, has made this area his home as well uh, oh, part of the year. That. And just the, the impact that the Tigers bring to Polk County, it will be neat to, uh, to in induct Al Kaline to our Hall of Fame. Oh yeah, definitely. Florida ISA Youth B State's coming up. Yeah, Extreme Obstacle Challenge uh, is a new event unlike any other, offering a whole new level of bragging rights, and uh, this will be done at Sun and Fun. And uh, we don't really want to give away all their secrets. We'll get them on the, on the show to talk about it, but that's uh, Saturday, June 29th, the Extreme Obstacle Challenge, and that's at Sun and Fun. You can go to ExtremeObstacleChallenge.com or Wendy at uh, Summer, S-O-M-M-E-R, Sports.com. And... A very unique event coming up. Uh, quite an honor to have the Sasbury Way International Soccer Econ Academy. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. That's going to be going on uh, in June, and and that's a really neat camp. Yeah, June 30th through uh, July 10th, and that's at the Lake Myrtle Sports Park. Uh, U.S. Campers is Tuesday, the July 2nd through the 6th. International Campers, the 30th through the 10th. Um, this is an exclusive club, over 600 players from Europe, Africa, and the U.S. who have uh, come to this international soccer camp in, uh, in Auburndale. Uh, U.S. students, the five-day camp is only $625, uh, 295 for commuters, so if they're not staying, they don't need accommodations. Um, and then the international camp, Camp is 10 days, $950. So they get a few more days because they're traveling so far. Uh, all pri uh, prices include your housing accommodations, your meals, the uniform, and then professional training. Just to, you know, we've talked about this a number of times, Hank, where uh, bringing the Florida Youth Soccer Association, relocating their headquarters to Lake Myrtle. Lake Myrtle is the epicenter of youth soccer in the state of Florida, and we are so blessed to have that right here in Polk County. You know, it's exactly what I was going to share with you is, you know, Ever since Lake Myrtle is open, we have gotten world-class uh, soccer, international mm -hmm. soccer, to come to Auburndale on top of some of the best soccer in the United States to come to Auburndale. Absolutely, and we don't only have soccer, we've also got baseball out there. Don't forget about that. Of course, the Rust Mat, Central Florida Collegiate Invitational, great event, but that's during a certain time period. Uh, an upcoming event is the Lake Region uh, Firecracker event. That'll be July 5th through July 7th, and that will be at the Lake Myrtle Sports Park using the baseball fields. Uh, 30 high school and collegiate teams uh, come to this event, uh, so it'll be a fantastic, uh, fantastic event. And then we're going to wrap things up with the Mid-Florida Table Tennis Tour Classic, uh, July 12th through July 13th at the Simpson Park Community Center, and uh, another great event that we're having, of course, uh, uh, you don't want to miss Sports Central on Thursday night, our radio show on WLKF and uh, one of the top talk sports shows in this area. And uh, anything else about sports, you can uh, visit us at centralfloridasports.com. Yeah, we'd also like to thank some more sponsors that make this show and what we do at Tourism and Sports Marketing possible. Contempo Vacation Homes, Hampton Inn, Lakeside South, or excuse me, Lakeland South, Florida Department of Citrus, Harry Seafood Bar and Grill, and Parkview Hotel. Again, partners that allow us to do what we can do for this county. Yep, and we couldn't thank them enough. And once again, want to make you aware for all our sporting information, go to centralfloridasports.com or you can call us at 551-4750. Now, our next live show is going to be Friday, June 28th, but you can also see this show every day at these times and days. Hank Longo along with Neil Duncan, and we'll see you again next time. Thanks so much.